In this video, I am going to provide you with one example or one method for framing a water heater platform in the corner of a garage. First thing I would suggest doing would be to cut a piece of plywood or OSB something 24 inches wide by 24 inches. And um, you can always measure your water heater and make it a little smaller or a little bigger if needed. This is just kind of a standard measurement. It will be 24 inches by 24 inches in this example and 18 inches high. And the reason why I put the cut the the top of the platform first is just to use it as a guide. You can simply cut it, stick it in the quarter, and trace the area at the bottom here. A lot of times you're going to have a stem wall in a garage. It's going to be a little higher in the corner, so you're going to need to set it up in the corner. Do not set it in up against the stem wall. This will create a problem. Set it in the corner up tight where the landing is going to go and then maybe get a framing square, stick it up against the corner or speed square and mark down or use a level, something where you can get a couple of lines. And then of course you can position your bottom plates for the walls effectively. And simply you have a line on the bottom to follow. Then you can simply frame the walls and the walls can frame either way. I'm going to show you another method. I'm going to have a link at the end of this video. Hopefully I'll do it soon and it will be it'll provide you with another method. I think there are two more methods you can use to frame these and this is kind of um, this is one that is real common to, to use with the walls and the wedges and on the walls you're going to want to have them go into, even though you don't need to, have them go into to where the top plate goes towards the, or even with the back, or even a little smaller. It doesn't need to go all the way to the back, but this will help us when we when we attach our walls. It just I should say this is just a method I like to use. I'm not suggesting that you need to do this, but this right here, you can do it on both sides, and it will provide you with a pretty good tie once you put your backing in and hook it into the um, the, the uh, little box that we're going to use for the platform. And I have it framed two different ways so you can see it. I have a flat stud here. You can see here I have a flat stud here on this one and then of course I put the stud in the opposite direction here because you are going to need to put a stud here in the corner for um, backing on each one of these will have one in the corner so either way it would finish would uh, it'll work uh, either way just personal preference the next step will be to build the frame or the little floor platform floor and a lot of times I just like to lay out the piece of plywood here that I'm using for the top and simply build the frame or the uh, little joist that we're going to use for the top. But again, you don't need to lay it on here. I'm just using this as an example for uh, one way to do it. Next step would be to place the platform that you just framed on top of the framing. And this is where the wedges are going to come in. You will use the wedges to level the platform. It will be need to level be need to be leveled in both directions this way and this way make sure that it's perfectly level and uh, definitely going to uh, help out with the water heater how much i don't know because if you had it uh, sloping back it's going to be touching the wall sloping forward the water heater could fall off of the platform the after you get everything nice and level you can nail it into the framing, nail it into the wall framing, nail it into the top plates, and then simply just break the wedges off or cut them off with a saw, sawzall, hand saw, something like that. And that would be it for this right here. The measurements for this, if I didn't mention them already, is 24 inches by 24 inches and 18 inches off the ground. 18 inches is the minimum. This 24 inch measurement might vary um, depending upon the size of your water heater. Here's what it would look like after it was completed. We have added these two boards and the blocks. This is backing for the drywall. 
I usually hold this board about a quarter of an inch off of the concrete since you're not allowed to have framing touch the concrete. If you want, you can always use a piece of treated for this corner. Just and you can have the treated touch the ground then. But that's why I put all the extra backing in so I don't have to. I can uh, let that uh, stay off of the concrete there. So here's what the back of this side would look like with the blocks. Remember, we have this particular board here turned this way. When we go over here, it is turned the other way. Give you a good idea. Two different ways to frame it. You do not need to frame one side of the wall this way and the other side this way. You can use one, one method for each side. Here's the blocks and the backing. And you could always run this up and uh, do the blocks however you wanted to. I think this looks the cleanest. And like I said, I like to extend the top plate over here so that I can nail, gives me some extra nailing into the um, backing here. If I didn't have this, I could nail into the block and nail into the um, sit into the into the wall framing sill and that wouldn't be a problem but I always like a little more plus this gives me a little more security a little more strength for the platform itself so I don't know how much uh, good it would do if a car was to hit this thing probably not going to do much good anyway not whether this is framed this way or not but anyway there you have it that is one way to frame a water heater platform and I will try to provide you with at least two more methods that I know of that are commonly used today and the links will be here at the end of the video